Oh my gosh, guys. This is freaking cool. Welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. I'm standing at the Forest Natural History Museum and I need to go on a huge dinosaur field trip today. So thank you guys so much for being part of this adventure. And let's go see what we do. All right, I finally made it to the Dino Hotel in Denver. Isn't that cool? Huge, like, you know, life-size murals of these gigantic dinosaurs on the outside of the hotel. All right, guys, I'm headed downstairs at the Dino Hotel to go check out their heated pool and hot tub. I'm gonna try the pool, okay? But you're thinking that the hot tub is probably going to be my jam. That is a beautiful pool. <gasps> okay, oh my gosh, that's not, that's not that bad. Do one of these. Okay, so it's not horrible, but it's not like the warmest. It's cool, but we're going to get back in the hot tub. This is probably at least 106, 104, whatever. It's fantastic. I enjoyed the hot tub for a little bit, but then I needed to get to bed because I had a big day. The next morning, I checked out everything downstairs at the hotel, and it turns out they had a dino talk, which meant they brought out all kinds of fossils and toys to show people and kids about different dinosaurs. And everywhere you look around the lobby was a different dinosaur bone or sculpture. Most of these I found out were museum quality replicas of actual dinosaur skeleton fossils. They also had some different minerals, petrified wood, which I love, and these huge dinosaur bones that I, I don't know what they were. I think there was a label, but I forgot to video it. And the skull was pretty cool. The name's on the plate. This is pretty freaking cool. When you first walk into the lobby of the hotel, one of the first things you see is a giant triceratops. And then you see a T-Rex skull, which was awesome. That's kind of one of my favorites. I don't know what this guy is, but it looks cool. Even though I was completely fascinated by everything I was seeing, I had to get ready because I needed to be at GSA first thing in the morning. Matthew said to walk to the building with the giant blue bear to meet him inside under the bear. I'm here. I had a wonderful person by the name of Julie helping from where we parked, walk over here, or I would have been so lost. That bear behind me is really, really cool. So I am just waiting to meet up with Matthew. For those of you wondering what GSA is or what it stands for, it's the Geological Society of America. They hold an event once a year and where a bunch of nerds like myself love to gather and talk about geology, paleontology, and other things related to the sciences. You get to walk around to different vendors, different booths, interview graduate students as they present their work, go to lectures, and do a bunch of really cool things. I love tormenting them and asking them really hard questions. Or, in some cases, you get to meet the coolest people ever, like these guys. And of course, swag is huge. These are great for rocks, guys. You'll see vendors from Brunton to NASA, and sometimes they offer you a job. Tomorrow, I get to go on a field trip where we talk about nothing but fossils, dinosaurs, and all, all kinds of stuff. GSA lasted a day, and that was really fun. But now, I'm on to the cool stuff. This is the Morrison Museum in Colorado and I am waiting for the tour group to show up so that we can meet up with Matthew and hear all about dinosaurs, a subject which I know very little about. For those of you that aren't familiar with the eras in the geologic scale or a time scale of rocks and dinosaurs, here you go, it's posted on the wall, it makes it simple. And the things that we're talking about are the Morrison. And for me, coming from a geologic background and not a paleontology background, I was fascinated. My knowledge of dinosaurs comes from the land before time because I loved Littlefoot, the long necks like the one you see here. But I was open and willing to learn about everything. And then 
I see that there's a whole nother level and I go upstairs and I see the big guys, a Triceratops and a T-Rex and other dinosaurs with feathers and whatnot. I was freaking out. I felt so blessed to be here. My inner nerd is freaking out. I've never had to hang out around dinosaurs before. The reason that we thought this was the story is because Arthur Links himself told us that this was the story. You can <laughs> understand the confusion. After Aaron gave us her presentation, then Matthew gave us his presentation, or really the entire tour. He started talking to us about dinosaur tracks, baby dinosaur tracks, how they mark over each other. I was again fascinated by all of the dinosaurs and flipping oh. out. Isn't that lovely? There's another dinosaur. Are you guys going to come in here so we can talk about the skulls of old dead things? Yes. What Matthew started to tell us is his most prized subject topic, so I quit recording for the sound because it's kind of private. And now we get to prep a bone, a rock, to actually look for dinosaur bones on our own. Ready to dive in. Safety Googles. Safety is always Anywhere you'd like. This is very dense here. This is a little softer. Oh. <laughs> But the pace you're going is the same pace you're going. Know. It's very satisfying. Oh, it is extremely satisfying. Oh my gosh. It was extremely satisfying, but extremely difficult. I can understand now if they're doing the chipping at that pace, why it takes five years just to extract one dinosaur bone. These are all bones that have been exposed over the past five years. Doing what we just did to clean up that sample to expose the eggs. Is this something that's like slightly exposed or no? Uh, yeah, that's this just, is bone. That is. Yeah, this is bone. Here. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's it's, so it's cool. It's been sitting in the sun, so it's white. So yeah. It's got, uh, really but yeah, there's bone there. There's a piece of bone there. Where that little pink thing? Yeah, there's a piece of bone there. Uh, what about? Pink. Oh wait, maybe isn't that pink? The, it's yeah. pink. I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the bone it, it has pink in it. Um, yeah, there's bone all throughout these boulders. That's a trip. There's bone lag of little chunks of bone that got tumbled downstream, so you have those pieces as well as the rest of the, all of the other bones. After all the fun and the play at the museum, we actually get to go out in the field and I get to see dinosaur stuff in person. But first we go by something called Red Rock Amphitheater. Apparently it's really a huge place in Denver. And then I see dinosaur tracks in the sandstone. I get to go underneath of them, touch them. It was insane. And yes, the strat is very tilted, so they're holding it up so it doesn't fall over, so it preserves the tracks. But that's the, the massive sandstone that's bleached white and ochre yellow. Beautiful, right? Yeah. See how, from our perspective, it's kind of horizontal? Mm -hmm. Now look at the Jurassic sandstone over there. You see how that is at a slightly different angle? kind of dipping, plunging to the south. There's a disconformity here, nonconformity and nonconformity. Um, so we have some time that's missing. The advent of this continuous paleosol sequence, these very large river channels that we see in almost every road cut, the large fossil rivers we find are in the lidal formation. Early the animal's moving this direction. This is a fetal track. Most of their mass is usually in the front end where there are bones. There's a large spoon we've had, like we can shoot posterior here to that. And they tend to taper like this. As you'll notice how you have bed, tenuous, right? Mm -hmm. Showing that this end will breach this surface. And then this is the sand that actually filled in the track later on, right? So this sauropod track, yeah. And we're going to place the cystical paleontology right here. It'd be a dinosaur. Maybe it's a dinosaur. And yes, after Matthew talks about it, I have to go touch it for myself. What can I say? I'm a hands on learner and I actually need to see and feel what it's like. After the majority of the talk, they let us go look at the dinosaur bones on our own. I couldn't believe they were just there in the rock. You can put your hand next to them, you can touch them. Just for the public's sake, this is a free park. It's heavily monitored. Don't steal anything and don't be disrespectful.
folder here is one of our of the cool boulder. I mean, there's lots of cool stuff here, but it's my favorite boulder. This is a nice boulder. After Aaron and Matthew finished talking about all of the amazing stuff going on with this boulder, I touched it and felt it, of course, and took a few more pictures. And then the tour ended, sadly. But I wanted to go and explore a little bit more because I wasn't coming back to the tour for day two. So I head off on my own. I am headed up the hill of Dinosaur Ridge on my own. Going through the tour was awesome, but the one thing that I'm skipping tomorrow is the tracks. So I want to see those big dinosaur tracks. And they are on this side of the hill. So I am gonna walk up the hill and see these beautiful painted tracks and some ripple marks. Okay, over the next few clips, there's going to be a bunch of signs. Please pause and read them. I'm not gonna read them to you. Those are all ripple marks. It's all this sandstone here. Depositionally was laid down flat. And then through the Colorado orogeny, got lifted and tilted. And now it's something like this instead of it being flat. This is an impression of a tree branch right here dinosaur courtship <laughs> courtship scratches in dinosaur ridge right up there and here these are our bumps and burrows guys and see them pretty clearly Look at this. This is our first set of tracks. Now I found out from Aaron today who works for Dinosaur Ridge that they don't scratch these and they're not painted actually. What they do is they grind up charcoal and they put it in water and then they gently paint the charcoal and water substance on these because they don't want to hurt them they don't want to mess up the impressions and they also don't want to have them too deep with erosion, like wearing them down at different levels. So this is just charcoal and they have to come out and do this periodically. Right around this corner is kind of a caged off area of the most famous track site for dinosaur footprints. <laughs> so like Matt was telling us today there is a ton of different dinosaurs that were in this area some of the fossils they have found here some of them were just passing through I'm gonna, and this all used to be flat understand how much it's been tilted <laughs> It's not like the dinosaurs were just walking uphill. It's a little bit about dinosaur behavior. You want a hand reference. That's how big these particular track is. And some of them get much bigger up there. If you guys have never been here before and you live in Colorado or even are planning to be in Colorado, I encourage you to go check this out. It's amazing. I was so fascinated by the history here. It was so exciting to see it with my own eyes and not just Jurassic Park. This is history, guys. This is really, really hardcore history. Even though I don't know a lot about it, I find it absolutely fascinating. <laughs> this will give you a great idea of just how tilted the strata is. What's that footprint? I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the shade better or the sun. Rare raptor track. It's right there. 
in that red circle. Hopefully you can see that real well. That's pretty sweet. So this is the trail, guys. We're gonna go up there. We're gonna just check it out for a little bit. These are all just tons of sandstone. You never know what you're gonna see. So this is Arthur Lake's little boat. Again, here's a sign, pause and read. But Arthur Lakes is the person that found the dinosaurs here at the Morrison Formation. He sat up on this lookout, looking over these beautiful mountains in Colorado while writing his journals. And then through digging and exploration, excavated the dinosaur bones we see today. Or at least he started the process. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think that I've been seeing like fossils and stuff the whole way up here. Like they're just on the ground. <laughs> Hi. Well, the 15 more miles to go. How, <laughs> how long is the trail and does it just stop? Uh, I mean, yeah, it stops kind of at top. No, it starts going down, I think. Is that to the other side? Yeah, probably not. Okay, thanks. We looked at the map. It said like two miles once you get to the very top. Okay, cool. Thank you. We're walking. <laughs> we won't take the whole trail. I just want to get to the viewpoint, which I think is that up there. And get a good view and then we'll mosey on back down. When we made it to the top, that wasn't a very long hike, but it sure is pretty. I think this is the end of Dinosaur Ridge for me. But look, look how far it travels. So if you start, uh, let's see, let's see, like the road cut area and you follow that ridge line all the way along and it dips and it keeps going. It's pretty phenomenal. I want to give a huge shout out to Matthew and Aaron. You guys were amazing. And if you get to the Morrison Museum or Dinosaur Ridge, tell them I said hi. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure. I know it was something completely out of the ordinary, but I am doing this massive road trip and I wanted to take you guys along with me. So thank you so much for being part of this adventure and I'll see you on the next one.